so in the previous video of the literature review of the second chapter related to design and control of modular multi level converters so so far we have discussed that what are the different uh, parameters that we have to decide for modular multi level converter we discussed that uh, basically how can we what are the different sub module topologies are uh, available and what type of inductor we we use and now we are going to discuss that what are the different sub module topologies or different sub module configurations basically are used nowadays so this is the after half bridge and full bridge so the researchers has basically proposed different types of sub module topologies so this is one of the sub module topology it is named as clamped single sub module topology so it is basically the extension of our half bridge sub module topology that enables blocking of dc side short circuit so this is the typical circuit diagram of a clamped single sub module you can see this upper part is same as half bridge topology we have discussed but there is a difference of two capacitors so uh, instead of one capacitor two capacitors are basically used and these are the additional devices d4 s3 and d3 these are the additional devices that are used in this in this submodule topology now in order to understand basically the operation of clamp single submodule so S one, S one, S two, D one, D two are basically taken from the H bridge. We know that, and S three, D three, and D four are basically the extension to analyze the fault blocking capability of this submodule topology. Compared to other topologies, in this conduction losses are going to be very high because the number of semiconductor devices are increased. so in the normal operation in the normal operation s1 s2 works similar as s is half bridge and this switch s3 is always remains connected it it is always conducting it is always conducting so because of this the conduction losses are very high and please note one thing that Uh, this S three is basically is opposite in polarity as compared to S one and S two, right? So the arm current basically the arm current flows. So basically the arm current flows through D three when it is positive and from s3 when it is negative right and what do i mean by a positive arm current a positive arm current means a current is flowing into the sub module and a negative arm current means a current is flowing out of the sub module so if current is going into the sub module it is considered as positive current and if it is going out from the sub module so it is considered as a negative current so if if the current flowing into the sub module is positive that means it it will if the switch 1 is on and switch 2 is basically off oh sorry if the switch 1 is conducting and this is not conducting so the current will flow through s1 it will come here and it will it won't go here towards the d4 and after from c1 from this c2 it will come here and from d3 it will go into the uh other sub modules so this is the path of the current when this is the path of the current when the when the current is positive and when the current is negative uh, obviously it it is not going to flow from it is not going to flow from this but the current will take 
basically D4 from this okay so so if the arm current is positive it will flow through d1 and d3 d1 d3 right and flow through two capacitors so two, these two capacitors are basically charged to the whole dc to dc uh, dc side voltage so one arm consequently now uh, let's say there is a dc dc fault occur at the stiff dc fault occur at the dc side so two times the rated dc voltage is available for blocking ac side currents flowing from one phase on the ac side through the fault on the dc side and back to another phase on the ac side and similarly if the arm current is negative the path for the current is d2 and d4 so d2 and d4 is the path of the current if current is negative current is flowing into the uh, out of the submodule so d4 is there and this will be the power of the current and from d2 it will go out so this time one, uh, the only one capacitor is available to <coughs> only half of the voltage is available to block the ac side fault current so similarly in this case also the dc side basically voltage is available for blocking of the fault currents flowing from one phase on the ac side through dc side fault back to the another phase on the ac side so a clamped single submodule can block the dc side faults without using of the circuit breaker so we don't need to handle the fault current by the semiconductor devices and S3 can be <coughs> rebuild the DC side voltage in order to restart the process operation quickly for temporary defaults. So if we can compare this submodule topology with the half bridge submodule topology though so the half bridge was unable to uh, it was unable to handle the fault current but this topology it is similar to half bridge but it differs from the use of number of semiconductor devices it is different in that case now the next now the next submodule topology that we are going to discuss is uh, clamped double submodule topology. So the clamped mm, mm. so these are the features of clamp single submodule topology that it can block DC side fault uh, without use of circuit breaker so no need to handle fault current by the semiconductor devices and S3 can uh, be used to rebuild the DC side voltage in order to restart the process operation quickly for temporary faults now we are going to discuss what is basically clamped double submodule and how it differs from clamped single submodule so it is the alternate of half bridge and full bridge submodule topology DC fault blocking without additional losses of full bridge submodule normal operation is same as two half bridge submodules in series and realized by S5, D5 and blocking diodes D6 and D7 in normal operation. So it has 35% more losses than half bridge due to the drop in S5 and D5, but loss is less compared to the reduced inductor size and cost to handle the fault current. 
and whenever the fault is uh, occurs all the switches are open so this is discussed whenever the fault occurs all the switches are open now we have to discuss that what is happening in this clamp double sub module topology so similar to clamp single sub module topology we are considering that either the current flowing into this sub module topology or the current will flow out of this sub module topology so the current flowing into this sub module topology will be positive so <coughs> diodes d1 d4 d6 d7 d1 and d4 d6 and this is d7 so these are conducting so the <coughs> and basically the current uh, and the arm current is divided basically between two capacitors two capacitors are in parallel so we see by two inserted against the fault current and the total inserted voltage is half of the dc side voltage so in 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 case of a pole to pole fault in dc side whole dc uh, whole dc voltage is available for blocking of the fault current flowing from one phase on the ac side through the dc side and back to another phase on the ac side so in a typical case how basically the current is flowing so the current is flowing from d1 it is coming here in this capacitor from d6 similarly the current is also flowing from d7 it comes here into this capacitor and from d6 it comes here and the current of this capacitor and this capacitor add up and they follow this path from d4 and they are out of the phase so they are out of the phase from this side this is the case considered when the arm current is positive now if, uh, now we are supposing that the arm current is negative that means current will flow outside of this sub module outside of this sub module so in that case d2 d3 and d5 will conduct so this is d2 and uh, this is d3 and this is d5 so starting from here current uh, will come here right it will flow through this d3 so it cannot go there so it will come here through this capacitor and it will come here following the path from d5 it will go here and from this capacitor it will come here and from d2 it will out of the it will go out of this phase so this case is considered uh, when a negative current is flowing when the direction of current is reversed so you can see that <coughs> in this case basically the capacitors are connected in series now two times the dc voltage is available to block the currents flowing from one phase on the ac side through dc side fault and back to the another phase on the ac side so this is this 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 is another way of blocking fault currents without using of the circuit breakers or another additional cost but you can see that the complexity of the circuit has been uh, increased has definitely increased so this is the disadvantage of basically this clamped double sub module no doubt it is it is handling basically the fault current but uh, and it is basically providing a certain amount of voltage to block the fault currents but again 
complexity has been increased now we are moving towards another topology which is a unipolar voltage full bridge submodule topology so what is that it is basically a modification of full bridge just one switch has been taken out we have we have taken out only one switch so in normal operation s1 is on all the time and s1 s2 operates the submodule of the half bridge so the no negative voltage can be inserted as in full bridge and in case of a dc fault s1 s2 s4 are open switch s4 is doing same purpose as learned the previous topology yes so you can see what is happening in this so the in the normal operation s1 is on all the time so s1 and s2 operates sub is half bridge so the no negative voltage can be inserted in as in full bridge and this topology has high conduction losses due to S4 now let's say a DC fault is occurred has occurred so in, in case of a DC fault S1, S2 and S4 are uh, open and S4 is doing the same purpose as learned in the previous topology so if the arm current is positive it will flow through this diode D1 it will follow this path and it will follow the D4 and it will go here and if the arm current is negative it will flow through this D3 then from D2 and out to the phase so in both the cases a capacitor is basically available to block the fault currents now we are going to discuss another submodule topologies that are basically available in the next video Till now we have discussed three uh, submodule topologies, single, uh, basically clamped single submodule. We have discussed we have discussed clamped double submodule, and we have discussed unipolar voltage full bridge 